Well, hello, friends, and welcome to episode 11 of the Life, Love, God podcast. This is a story of a soul traveler written by Norman Paulson, a direct disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda. And today we're going to talk about chapter 13, entitled, I Find the Two Large Dark Eyes. This was a seminal chapter for this particular book because this was the point where the direction of Norm's life changed completely and he moved in a different direction. Um, he'd been honorably discharged from the Marine Corps. He'd only served one year and one day in the U.S. Marine Corps because all the extra Marines that they'd taken on after World War II were too many and the military was cutting personnel so they gave everyone a choice. Uh, you can either be honorably discharged today or you can sign up for an, an additional three years. And Norm decided, since he really didn't enjoy his time in the Marine Corps, uh, to take his honorable discharge. Uh, he and his friend John Winship uh, began working together at a lumber yard in Alhambra. And one Sunday, they decided to spend the day with their friend Ed Smith in Santa Monica at Muscle Beach. And as I've reminded listeners before, Muscle Beach today is in Venice, but in those days, 1947, it was in Santa Monica. Ed was very excited about an artist that he had met in Venice, so they decided to take the speedway from Santa Monica to Venice to visit Mr. Stoitz, the artist. Now, when I read this, I thought, well, that's strange. I don't remember a racetrack from Santa Monica to Venice. It turns out that the Speedway was a nickname for uh, a road that was never paved. It was dirt and went along the beach from Santa Monica to Venice. And many people took that road rather than the paved road one block over because the paved road had lights, it had stop signs, it had the red cars and the tro trolleys, um, and it held up traffic. But on the Speedway, you could go as fast as you wanted. So when they arrived at the artist's home, Norm saw a book on his coffee table, the book you see in the picture here. And he asked a few questions of his host. Who is this man and where does he live? Well, this book is a book that's changed many people's lives in this world. It was Autobiography of a Yogi. And Norm's intuition kept telling him that something would happen at that artist's home that would change the direction of his life. So he was very excited about what was happening that day. Norm wrote this, and I'm going to use Norm's words many times in this particular podcast because no one could say it better than he's already said it. But he wrote, Sitting down, I happened to glance at the coffee table. My eyes fell on the cover of the book. There staring up at me were the same phantom eyes and the face of the apparition seen long ago in my childhood visions. The two large dark eyes, the long black hair, it was him. Here was the actual picture of the man's face that had appeared to me at times for my whole life. He was for real. It was really him. I reached for the book, suddenly feeling in that dreamlike place, watching as if beyond myself. I knew I had to see this man right away. I felt I was already in contact with the spirit of Yogananda, and time was of the essence. I must go quickly. I finally arrived outside the gates of Mount Washington Monastery and parked the car. And you see in the photo, this is what those, those, uh, the gates at Mount Washington look like even today. I opened one of the iron gates and walked down the road between the row of palm trees towards a large three-story building that resembled an old, old hotel, which in fact it was an old hotel before Yogananda had purchased it. He met an elderly woman and explained that he was there to see Paramahansa Yogananda, but was told that it was impossible. His appointments were booked months ahead. Disappointment, or disappointed, uh, Norm was told he could hear Yogananda speak at the Hollywood Temple next Sunday. So he bought a copy of the book that he'd seen on the coffee table, and he drove home. And Norm spent that week reading the autobiography of a yogi. It was very difficult because, as he, as he said, he knew nothing of yoga or nothing of the Hindu terminology that he found in the book. But finally, 
The Sunday arrived. He went to the Hollywood Temple, and you can see in these pictures, you see uh, a picture of the Hollywood Temple probably from the 50s, um, based on the cars that we see there, um, the late 40s, early 50s. Yogananda, in the bottom picture, is seen speaking to uh, the people there at the Hollywood Temple. And Norm writes, when I entered this beautiful little temple, the long felt vibration intensified. So Norm's physical body is having clues that something amazing is about to happen. He asked about seeing Yogananda privately, but was rebuffed again by one of the workers there and told not without an appointment. Norm writes, the little temple was full of people. An organ began to play. And while sitting there, I suddenly felt like crying. The curtains opened and there stood Yogananda in an orange robe, long black hair falling over his shoulders. I looked straight at his eyes with all the force that I had. It seemed that he saw me and our eyes locked in an energy exchange. Tears began to pour from my eyes. After the Sunday service, Norm walked out onto the veranda. A sister came out and said, Pardon me, are you waiting to speak with Parmahanja, Par Parmahansaji? Norm said, yes, but I have no appointment. And she answered, excuse me, an appointment won't be necessary. He asked me to tell you he would like to talk with you. Can you wait? So Norm waited and finally a sister beckoned to him and he climbed the stairs and entered the room. And he wrote, Yogananda was seated in a chair to my right. As I turned, he looked directly up at me and our eyes locked again. He put out his hand, which I took. Again, I felt tears flowing my eyes and I kneeled down beside him. He pulled me even closer saying, my giant has returned. How soon can you come? There are so many similarities between this meeting with Yogananda and the meeting of Yogananda with his own guru. So let's, let's go back for a moment to 1910. Yogananda and his friend Habu were sent on an errand in the, in the city of Benares. And Yogananda wrote, as Habu and I moved on, I turned my head to survey a narrow, inconspicuous lane. A Christ-like man in the ochre robes of a Swami stood motionless at the end of the lane. Suddenly and anciently familiar he seemed, for a trice my gaze fed hungrily. So trice is another way of saying for a moment. So Yogananda turned and walked on and after about 10 minutes, Yogananda felt numbness in his feet. He wrote, as though my feet had turned to stone, they were unable to carry me farther. Laboriously, I turned around and my feet regained normality. Retracing my steps as though wingshod, I reached the narrow lane. My quick glance revealed the quiet figure steadily gazing in my direction. A few eager steps and I was at his feet. Guru Deva, the divine face was the one I had seen in a thousand visions. Those halcyon eyes with a leonine head, with a pointed beard and flowing locks, had often peered through the gloom of my nocturnal reveries, holding a promise I had not fully understood. Sri Yukteswar answered, Oh, my own, you have come to me. How many years? Have I waited for you? 
we entered a oneness of silence. Words seemed the rankest superfluities. Eloquence flowed in soundless chant from the heart of a master to disciple. It was an antenna of irrefragable insight. Another way of saying undeniable insight that I had sensed that my guru knew God and would lead me to him. The obscuration of this life disappeared in a fragile dawn of prenatal memories. He began to see things from his past lives. Dramatic time, he wrote, past, present, and future are its cycling scenes. This was not the first son to find me at these holy feet. Guru and disciple had both recognized each other. Yogananda, in the presence of Sri Yukteswar, had a recall of past lives together with his guru. Now as we move backwards or forwards to 1947, Yogananda had just said to Norm, my giant has returned. And Norm wrote, with my eyes closed, I was transported back through time. The colored panorama of numerous lifetimes flashed before my inner vision. We had been together many times before, working, building, even fighting side by side as warriors in the struggle against the spirits of darkness. Again, Yogananda spoke, how soon can you come? Norm answered, tomorrow, sir. Norm had seen the two large dark eyes in his dreams and in his visions, and he was never quite sure what they meant or why it was important until that day at the Hollywood Temple. As he drove towards Mount Washington and a life with Yogananda, he realized he had reached a significant fork in the road of his life, a new direction and a completely different purpose for his life. As he contemplated his new life, that was about to begin, he spoke to the divine. Thank you, spirit, mother and father. Thank you for joining us for this particular episode. I hope that you'll read this chapter over several times. I apologize for my emotions, but it's very difficult for me to read this chapter without experiencing at the same time. So as a reminder, you can order your own copy of Life Love God, either through Sunburst directly or through Sunburst. You can subscribe to our Sunburst Sanctuary YouTube channel. Um, you can leave comments on our podcasts, which I encourage you to do, particularly if they're positive, and tell your friends about the Sunburst YouTube channel. So. In preparation for next week, please read and, or excuse me, for next month, please read and study chapter 14, The Monastery. Thank you until we meet again.